Just when I thought I've seen it all. Pulled in vacuum tubes, pulled on maglev rails, pulled on regular rails, pulled in road tunnels, pulled instead of freight trains, pods within highways, pods as robo taxis, pods for you to live in, more pods for you to live in, more pods to live in. Wow, this trailer home business, I mean, I'm sorry, I mean residential pod business really took off. But what could be even cooler than a pod in your backyard? This was the question the company Ocean Builders asked themselves. And then they figured, what if we put the pods on a stick? into the sea. Thus the sea pod was born, an innovative, well, pod floating on the sea for you to live in it. It's essentially a 66 square meter floating one bedroom apartment. It has a circular design with a near 360 degree window coverage. Inside it looks like most modern apartments, clean, sleek and bright. All in all, it looks alright, except for, you know, the whole floating at sea on a fucking pole part. Ocean Builders is run by two guys coming from the world of cryptocurrency, tech business guy Grant Romond and former defense contractor and libertarian thinker Chad Elvartovsky. To their credit, they released a ton of materials about their project. Their YouTube channel in particular is extremely prolific with an endless sea of content. A video that caught my eye is one among the earliest, cryptically titled MS Satoshi. It's a strange video, 45 seconds long, with nothing but drone footage of a ship which has Satoshi plastered awkwardly over its previous name and has some sort of playground in the middle. This ship is not mentioned anywhere on the Ocean Builders website. Thanks for joining us, oceanbuilders.com slash cruise ship. That link gives you a 404 error, while the other link in the description gives you a privacy error. So I looked up what the MS Satoshi was and oh boy I wish I didn't. This is foreshadowing for another video coming out soon. For now, it's enough to know that Ocean Builders is a libertarian project funded by anarcho-capitalist tech bros. On their website, they show us the structure straight out of Waterworld, from our first prototype. We launched our original engineering prototype in February 2019. It was an octagonal box and it was functional but not pretty. We have come a long way since then. Indeed you have, straight out of Thailand, before you could receive the death penalty for… oh look at me, getting ahead of myself. Their latest prototype looks much better, resembling an actual house of sorts. This actually looks like something that could be built, unlike the other version the Seapot flagship, which looks like an alien testicle. So what is wrong with this idea? What is wrong with moving people into futuristic pods on the sea on top of poles? Part 1. Everything? Let's start with the obvious. This is an extremely unstable design, therefore dangerous to its occupants. Have you ever held a dumbbell with weight plates only on one side? Try holding it vertically. It'll be very difficult and if it's too heavy it can even sprain your wrist. Now make the handle longer. That thing will break your wrist. Now put that dumbbell into the water, make it bigger and try living on it. You know, there's a reason why everything we put on water has a ton of surface area connecting it to the water. It's a way to stabilize the structure in the face of wind and waves. The sea pod does not have a lot of surface area connecting to the water. Instead, it has this weird tripod made up of buoys of sorts. They are all connected to the column the pod is sitting on with some sort of beam. And isn't that absolutely terrifying? If salt water gets into the structure and starts corroding it, and or the constant movement of water wears the beam down, you're likely looking at the beam snapping eventually due to material fatigue. Especially since there is such a huge load on them, having to stabilize an entire apartment. Imagine waking up to a loud snapping sound at midnight. Then, as you try to fall asleep again to the sounds of the stormy sea, your whole house begins to tumble into the water. Power goes out. Your living room fills with cold, dark water as you're flailing around in panic, trying to open one of the windows to escape. It sounds pretty terrifying, doesn't it? But surely these people would make extra certain that there is absolutely nothing wrong with this floating mechanism. Surely they designed a ton of redundancy and excess capacity into it. Well, stay tuned. At this rate, I'm surprised these people had the competence to even put together a website. Oh, well, for the most part anyway. How did they even start their business. I always imagine people like this to be prime targets for online scams and phishing. Hey bro, check it out, you just won 2 trillion bitcoin, click here to claim your prize, with all your personal data and banking information. Whoa bro, really? To the moon! Chances are all their stuff is already in the hands of data brokers, corporations that scrape personal data from public records, social media and places where you give out info about yourself, like on online contests, surveys and so on. And once they have your data, you can become a target for harassment or worse, including for your political views and opinions. Not to mention fun stuff like identity theft, such as someone taking out a mortgage with your data or outright stalking. You better get rid of superfluous personal data online. And to do that, I recommend you use Delete Me. Delete Me is a service that helps you wipe your personal data from hundreds of data broker websites, thereby protecting you against identity theft, harassment or stalking. Once you specify what personal data to remove, experts will look for them on websites, a lot of websites, and request their removal. A week later, you'll get your privacy report detailing what they found of you and consequently 
got removed. They will also rescan websites later to make sure your data didn't surface somewhere else. Do not let your personal data fall into the wrong hands. Get 20% off Delete Me US consumer plans by going to joindeleteme.com slash adam20 and use the promo code adam20 during checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash adam20 promo code adam20. Thank you for checking out Delete Me. Right, so those sea pods. I'm sorry to say, but those things just won't be stable enough to live in. Or you'll just have to live light and have one strong stomach. Putting yourself high above the water level on a stick means any wave will toss around that apartment much more than if the pod was floating directly on the water. This isn't even physics, this is elementary school geometry. Another issue is logistics, as in why it's a stupid and impractical idea to be living in an apartment anchored at sea instead of on the coast. How do you get groceries or mail? You have to climb down a ladder into a boat and then you're a half an hour commute away from the shore and there god knows how much more to a supermarket, post office and so on. You can't even just navigate your house into port like you could with a regular houseboat. Since this project is done by a bunch of tech bros, of course they envision logistics with drone transport. Except drones have a finite capacity so if you order something you always gotta look at the weight to make sure it can actually get to you. Also, if the weather is too windy, which happens quite often at sea, drones might need to be grounded. There is a problem even with simple shipments, such as food deliveries by drone. Have you ever wondered why that never took off, no pun intended? One reason was birds attacking the drones. In the skies over North Canberra, there's a battle for air supremacy. This particular bird was protecting its territory, but if we take a particularly reckless and hungry type of bird like, I don't know, a seagull, of which there are quite a few at sea, those delivery drones will be swarmed before they make it even halfway. Not to mention, there is a reason why the pristine, peaceful nature the pods are depicted in are indeed so pristine and peaceful. It's likely a nature protection zone, home to various protected bird and insect species who likely wouldn't appreciate the constant, loud drone traffic back and forth. Flying to your home, drone delivery has been running in Canberra and in Logan in Queensland for several years. It's convenient for some, but residents like Dan living in the flight path say it's time for them to buzz off. I feel angry. I feel annoyed. It actually stresses me sometimes. I, you know, you're sort of chilling out and um, after working all day, you hear this buzzing noise like it's, um, it's like a very, very loud mosquito and then it gets louder and louder. Do you know who else wouldn't appreciate heavy drone traffic? The local environmental protection authorities, in addition to not appreciating heavy boat traffic between the shore and the pods. Speaking of, where do they plan to put the sewage? Are they going to pull it Dubai and have a poop ship suck out septic tanks? Good luck trying that in a nature protected area. Area. Or will they lay pipes for drinking water and sewage all the way to each pod? There's just no way you could get a permit for that. Aside from having to tear up the seafloor and obliterate the local fauna in a straight line, which is already a complete non-starter, there is always a risk of a pipe rupturing. If that happens, congratulations, your pod is now spewing liquid shit into the pristine water surrounding it. It's the same story with electricity. You would need kilometers of sturdy, water and shockproof high voltage cables running on the seafloor clad in external protective layers. All those kilometers of high-end piping and wires, plus permitting, installation and maintenance would add thousands if not tens of thousands of dollars to the price of each pod. But no sane government would sign off on this anyway, so there's that. Their solution to these problems is to have batteries and a water purifier inside the pod, right under the living area. The maximum amount that is nine batteries, basically that's for 45 uh, kilowatts of power. Then we have the network switches. Then we have the home automation server. What the f- Do you want to put your server and batteries right next to your water storage? Also, you want to put multiple cubic meters of water up high in your pod? One cubic meter of water weighs one ton. By the looks of it, you'll have at least five cubic meters of capacity, so you're adding five more tons to the top of your highly unstable structure. G great! Also, about those 45 kilowatts of batteries, how do you plan on charging them? There don't seem to be any solar panels on your pod. Well, at least we know that instead of piping, they want a DC desalination unit inside their pod. Those desalination plants eat about 0.3 kilowatts per hour. I assume you would have to run it constantly to cover your consumption. Now 0.3 kilowatts might not sound much, but that's 7.2 kilowatts per day, meaning it would drain the batteries in 6 days or so. But water is not the only thing you need power for. You also have to heat the water, which will eat about 1 kilowatt per day. Add one more for all the other stuff like the light, the TV screen and so on, for a total of 9.2 kilowatts per day. But then you also have to run a server for the pod's smart functions, including a smart bed up 
apparently, plus presumably a reasonably strong computer since we are talking about tech bros here. Let's say we can average that out to a constant 500 watts over 24 hours. That's 12 kilowatts per day. So in total, this pod would use about 21 kilowatts per day, meaning the batteries would need swapping every two days or so. It seems they do plan on using solar panels though, but as the average output of one panel is about 1.5 kilowatt hour per day, they would need about 15 to cover the basics. Not only that, but they would need to align all panels directly towards the sun at all times to get those numbers, which would mean these sleek, futuristic pods would have to be absolutely riddled with panels sticking out of it, a fact they curiously omitted from their visualizations. Okay, so these pods kind of have power and they kind of have drinking water. The sewage question is still unresolved, however. Since there are no outside connections leading to the pod, it seems like they will go for the septic tank approach, which means a poop ship showing up once in a while to pump up their wastewater. Also, hang on, what's this grey thing here? And uh, here you see the incinerator. The incinerator? Do you plan on burning your trash inside the engineering room, across the servers and batteries? What the f- Hang on, that means now your pod needs a chimney, so you can let the smoke out into the pristine wilderness around you when burning your trash. Love the smell of burning plastic in my pristine tropical paradise. If all this wasn't enough, living in pods like those means being subject to constant social isolation. Or, if you're living with a partner, one hell of a cabin fever. The only way to go and see other people is to get in your kayak and pedal for half an hour to a harbor. If the weather is stormy or windy, well, I guess you're staying home. Oops, there goes your power, because the sun hasn't been shining for the past week and you spent too much time under the hot shower. Have fun for the rest of the week. One more thing these geniuses forgot to take into account is safety. No rational, sane government would allow these fucking pots to be built so that a bunch of crypto bro libertarians can pollute their shores. So naturally, the solution is to find a country with weak governance and lax environmental laws. But those places tend to be a lot less safer. Think of it this way, if you can bribe an official to let you build those pods, you can also bribe an official to look the other way when you and your buddies float in on a dinghy at night with AKs, board the pods and take everything of value at gunpoint. What the hell do they think would happen if word got out that on the shores of a poor, developing country there are dozens of affluent libertarian tech bros living in expensive pods isolated from the outside. They don't even have to risk robbing them near the shore. The robbers can just come in at night, have someone in scuba gear cut the anchor cables and then tow the pods to a secluded area and then do the robbery there. Sounds like this little libertarian utopia is in need of security. So they could band together and put a predetermined amount of money into a common fund each month so they can pay a security detail to keep them safe. We could call this process, oh I don't know, taxation. So much for this whole sea pod idea. Putting the pods in the forest doesn't make things better either. First off, all these forest pods are depicted in beautiful, pristine surroundings, like national parks. And so, please name me one national park or any other nature protected area that would allow you to bring in construction equipment, bore a giant hole, fill it with concrete and then attach a forest pod to it. Those pods under promotional material, how are they built there? Or rather, how many thousands of rare species would get flattened in the process of construction by heavy machinery, workers trampling through the forests and fields and so on. Once again, no sane government would ever sign off on this. Not in the developed world anyway. But if you find a government that can be persuaded to allow this, well, once again, weak governance does have its drawbacks. And my god, how would you even handle logistics there? It's even worse than the sea pods. At least there it would be near a port or something. But here, how do you get stuff delivered to the top of a fucking mountain? Better yet, how do you get electricity? Those pods are among the trees in the shadows. Where will you put your solar panels? What will you do with your sewage? You would need a septic truck to show up every month, blowing through the pristine landscape just to suck out your shit from under you. Have these people given any thoughts to all this whatsoever? No? Okay. Why would anyone want to live in these fucking pods? whether in the forest or at sea. Who even is your target consumer here? If some tech-brained person with too much disposable income decides to buy a gimmicky home on the sea or in the forest, then why not a houseboat or a small cabin? Why this engineering and permitting nightmare? But the founders of Ocean Builders were undeterred by things like common sense. In 2022, they ceremoniously unveiled their first prototype, which fucking sank immediately. Ugh, oh my god, you had one job, one fucking job to make sure your floating pot thing stays afloat at least for a fucking premiere presentation. Just tie it down, anchor it, fix it 15 different ways, do load tests, rehearsals. How can you be this fucking incompetent? I swear, anyone stupid enough to buy these fucking pods will be dead within a month due to some catastrophic flaw these idiots never considered. Like the incinerator raising the ambient temperature inside, causing one of the batteries to fail, engulfing the entire pod in flames within seconds. But Ocean Builder's shocking incompetence was on full display even before this debacle. That rough prototype pod you see on their website was to be a tiny but groundbreaking instance of not just a sea pod, but of a small libertarian utopia at sea, free of government rules and taxation. So the whole seasteading concept will be um, better governance, um, your business will grow because 
you're actually in a system where there's smart smart systems as opposed to all the gridlock and uh, horrible systems that current governments have. They have a monopoly on land, but they don't have a monopoly on sea. As I've mentioned in the beginning, this whole sea part affair is deeply rooted in libertarianism. Not the cool and fun leftist kind, you know, you're about your choice, legal weed and so on, but the fucking deranged, anarcho-capitalist, right-wing, crypto-bro, fashy libertarianism filled with grifters, losers and complete fucking psychopaths. So the first prototype was named 42, an homage to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It was, quote-unquote, launched to great fanfare by the libertarian community with El Bartowski on board. There he is, dancing on top of the pod with his girlfriend, a Thai influencer. He publicly declared it to be a a big middle finger to all those out there who want to control other people's lives through force. The trouble was, he made that statement while standing on a likely illegally built structure on the shores of Thailand, a military dictatorship where the act of, quote, endangering national sovereignty is punishable by life in prison or execution. So when the authorities saw dipshit westerners setting up an illegal structure on their shores, declaring it a big fuck you to the Thai government, they took it rather poorly, if you can believe that. The pod appeared on national headlines, with various officials making a public show of threats and plans to to raid and seize the pod. The couple had to flee the country in the dead of night as they faced life sentences or even the death penalty should they stick around. In the end, the Thai Navy ended up impounding the first prototype, but such details are curiously absent from the sea pod page. Now I know what you are likely thinking. Are they seriously so fucking stupid as to try to set up an anti-government libertarian utopia within the borders of a fucking military dictatorship? You are likely thinking this, but well, we're all thinking this actually. You know, just because the Thai government tolerates western tourists banging Thai prostitutes in exchange for tax revenue doesn't mean you get free reign around their country. But all this could have been avoided if these morons just sat down and did a two-minute Google search, or just went on Reddit or something and asked people, can I build an illegal structure on the shores of Thailand and declare it a big middle finger to their government? I'm sure many, many people would have been more than happy to solve this conundrum for them, before they would spend tens of thousands of dollars and subsequently escape the country in the dead of night. This is why sea pods, or forest pods for that matter, are a stupid idea. And ocean builders, look, Look, just, just build a houseboat or a forest cabin. Hell, if you made them look sleek and futuristic, you might even be able to find buyers for them. Houseboats resembling yachts, futuristic forest cabins, I'm sure there would be people interested within your target demographic. This would even work better with your little floating libertarian city idea. Chad, Grant, look, if you create a small universal raft you can put various stuff on, you have the basic building block for an entire settlement. That way you can put homes on the rafts, little squares, parks, common areas and so on, and then you can just hook them together any way you want. I'm sure the Panama government would be okay with you guys setting up a small floating settlement in one of their bays. At that point, you could advertise it as this libertarian resort anyone can come and visit. You could then call this little settlement Raftopia or something. At least this is what I would do if I wanted to create an NCAP crypto bro utopia. I just, I just can't believe these people couldn't figure all this out on their own. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you next time.